Let us pray. Thank you, Father, so very kindly for waking us up today. Thank you for allowing us the privilege to come before your Holy Word to learn of you. We invite the presence of your Holy Spirit to be with us and to teach us and guide us and speak to us individually. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So today I wanted to talk about a very important subject. I mean, everything as far as the lessons that God wants us to learn as far as our Christian walk is very important. But this one is no different. And a lot of people are dragging your feet when it comes to this important subject. <laughs> and I can understand why in certain cases, but I think it's so important if you value your salvation, if you value the Word of God, if you value the Holy Spirit that is with you, that is convicting you and I to do this very thing that I'm about to talk about, you know, then, then you will listen and do it. And this subject is leaving the cities, moving from the, from the cities into the country. I know a lot of, um, the, a lot of individual independent people talking about it on, on YouTube, Facebook, and in certain places. And even in, in, in very small places in, in, in the church, some people are talking about it, but as far as my experience, I didn't, I didn't even know any such a thing as far as country living or leaving the city and, 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 and building a place for you and your, and, and your family in the country. I had no clue about it until less, less than two years ago. And I've been an Adventist for a while. And so that should tell you the level of, of the level of complacency, the level of, of admonition or listening to the admonition of the Holy Spirit or listening to the admonition and, uh, you know, the admonition of the testimonies that has been given to us. Sister White wrote about country living and leaving the cities and moving our families and even ourselves individually, not even just our families. You don't have to be, have a family to move to the country. You can move to the country by yourself right this this testimony was given to her this admonition and warning was given to sister white god's prophet that prophet of god over a hundred years ago and i didn't find this out until almost two years ago after being an adventist for a while and that, that is a very sad thing and that's a very sad state our church as an organization our church our church excuse me our church as a full body is not talking about it because the majority of, of the people in our churches, not just the majority, but the, the, the people that are in charge of the church or the church as an organization don't think there's nothing wrong with living in the cities. And, and most people are making the argument that you can be saved anywhere. Yes, you can be saved anywhere. That is true. But not if... The Spirit of God has given the admonition. There's a reason. There's a purpose for the Spirit of God giving the admonition for, for, the, for the children of God, for the people of God in these days, especially to leave the cities and find your way to the country. And as far as my, my testimony, I, as I said, to, less than two years ago is when I heard leaving the cities as far as the country living message, leaving the city and <laughs> moving into the country. And even when I heard about it, I heard about it off of YouTube. I would just watch in the videos as far as, um, and I have forgotten this, this gentleman. I think it's living manna ministry that I heard it from, if I'm not mistaken. And he started to do a country living, I think part one, part two. And I, and I started to, to, to learn more about it. And the very moment I heard about it, that's when the COVID situation left China and came to the U.S. And guess what? I grabbed my, <laughs> I grabbed my stuff and just headed out. You have to move on faith. And for, you know, to make a long story short, as far as my testimony, because I don't want to talk about myself. It's about the word of God, of God. It's about the testimony of the living God, but it's important. It is so very important, especially if you have a family to raise them in the country because the influences of the city is detrimental 
to not just only your life as a family or as an individual, but to your children. If you want to raise your children in a godly atmosphere, in a godly way, you have to move from the cities. Besides, the cities, a time is coming. Matter of fact, we're living in that time. It's not coming. It is here. It's not going to be safe for you and I to live anywhere in the city. Not if you're trying to avoid the mark of the beast. Not if you're trying to, to follow God all the way and go into heaven. You cannot live in the cities because guess what? They're going to shut down the cities. And their time is coming where as far, I don't know as far as your, your, your vaccination status, but the people that refuse to get vaccinated, a time is coming where every, not a time is coming. Actually, they've started it in certain countries. Everything is going to be cut off for the people that refuse to be vaccinated, meaning the people in the world and the people in the church, even the people in the world that don't have our message, the people in the world that don't know nothing about the testimonies and our health message and the testimonies as far as leaving the cities and going to the country, they are making even better choices and better decisions than Adventists that have been in this church for years. And it's baffling to me. The people that don't know nothing about God can look and see that, no, no, something is amiss with all the things that are going on. Something is not right. They've started eating right. They're talking about not, not getting vaccinated and, and all that, right? And so we need to make sure that we are making better choices for ourselves. You cannot. The church, the Seventh-day Adventist church as an organization, God is going to pass it by. I have to say that clearly and succinctly. The Seventh-day Adventist Church, let me say that again. As an organization, God is going to pass it by like he did with the ancient Israel. The rabbis, there were rabbis over there. There were schools of the prophets and, and whatnot over there. But guess what? He passed by all of them and picked his twelve out of the people that they thought were ignorant and unlearned and uncouth, so to speak, right? So if you're, if you're banking, if you're banking your salvation, if you're resting your salvation on the SDA church as an organization, you have to beware. You have to be careful. Mind you, I'm not saying that the Seventh-day Adventist church as an organization is Babylon. No, no, I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is the church as an organization is not the remnant. <laughs> the remnant is going to be called within the church, within the organization, within the body of the church. Because unfortunately, the reason why I say that, unfortunately, the majority of the people of the, at the helm of the church have turned their backs. They are literally telling people to do this, to get vaccinated. I'm going to say it, to get vaccinated or, 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 or to get vaccinated, matter of fact, right? And the second thing is they're saying that you don't have to move into the country, basically discarding the testimonies, disregarding and discarding the testimonies. You cannot trust your salvation to any man or any woman or anyone. You have to listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit who has told you through his word. Move in faith. Leave the cities. And you have to take a leap and a step of faith in order for God to provide and continue to provide for you. You cannot just say, well, I, what am I going to do with my job? What am I going to do with my, 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 my big mansion or my big house that I have? How am I going to feed my family? I can guarantee you, my brother and my sister, the same God that has told you leave and move will provide. I left. I left the city and by God's grace, after, after moving forward in faith, because when I heard the country living message, I grabbed what the little that I had and got on the road in faith. And by God's grace, he provided. He provided us a place in the country. And I, we lived there for about a year, a year and a little bit. I literally, and I'm going to come back to that. I literally, literally bought a house in the country on mortgage. 
That's another thing that we have to be mindful of and beware of. I remember, well, let me finish the story. So I, we got a place in the country ish because we moved from there recently, a couple of months ago, moved from there to another place. <laughs> so I, I, I got a loan, got a mortgage. Oh, the sun. You can't do that to me now, son. <laughs> I'm so sorry, guys, if the sun is in the way. So, yes, I got a play. We, 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 we got a mortgage, bought a place. Yeah, the sun is, is really bad in my face. I'm so sorry. I'm just so, <laughs> I, want to, I want to just cut it short, but I have to continue. So we bought a place and, and, and had to move from there. And even then, this was in the country now, the place that we got on mortgage I remember I spoke to someone and I asked them. So when the time comes, like no buy, no sell, and of course I'm not going to be able to pay for this mortgage that I have. What 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 is your opinion? What do you think I should do? And this person told me just walk away, just walk away from it. And in certain in certain instances or or in a certain way, that person is right. But then in another way, that's not totally right because if you walk away from it let's say for instance the, the no buy no sell starts and you're living in a mortgaged house and you simply walk away from it where are you gonna go where are you going to go when you've had the chance to step out on faith and 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 even if it's just a, a, a an acre of land you don't have to buy 10 50 acres even if just an acre of land that you can put a tent on until God provides step by step, right? Now is the time to make those kinds of preparation because when the buy, the no buy and no sell hits, which it is, it is about to hit, believe it or not. From next year going, things are going to just change rapidly and it will shock you and I. Now is the time, my brother and sister, to leave the city. Now is the time to step out on faith and trust the God whom you've been serving for a while. Let him show you who he is. He is the one who said, leave the cities. He will provide. Have the faith and trust him. Put your house on the market. If it's an apartment that you have, break the lease. Break the lease, pay for what you need to pay for, grab what you have and move and step out on faith. The moment you step out on faith, God will provide. So as far as my mortgage, <clears throat> my mortgage house, I remember I came to help a sister that lives around here. I came to help her and she said, you know what, sis, you need to, you need to, to, to get, get away, get, get, get away from under this mortgage situation that you have. And, and I thought about it. I was like, okay. I put it in the back of my head. And then I heard another pastor, Pastor David Gates. No, Richard Gates. Pastor Richard Gates. David Gates' father. I heard him say, <laughs> I heard him say that if you live, if your neighbors, where you living at, if your neighbors can look in your windows and see you, you're too close or they're too close. If they can pick up a stone and throw it and hit you where you're at or hit your house, they're, they're too close. It's time to move. And so that's when I decided, okay, Holy Spirit, because out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, a thing is established. And I knew then that the Holy Spirit was speaking. And so guess what? Right away, in less than a week, I put my house on the market. And in less than a month, by the God's grace, it got sold. And in less than a month, I am not lying to you before God. In less than a month, just because I step out, stepped out on faith. In less than a month, God provided us the land, the place, the people to clear the land. I can tell you, it'll be, I'll be here all day trying to tell you that the, 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 rep, the the, the rapidity or the fastness in which God has established us here where I'm at speaking to you right now. 
you have to step out on faith, my brother and my sister. It is going to be very, very dangerous for you, your family, your children to be in the cities. You have to leave the cities. Now, I said, if you left your mortgage house right now, or not right now, when the, it really gets critical and they take everything away from you and you walk away from your mortgage house or your big mansion, where are you going to go? And I say, where are you going to go? Because my brother and my sister, not all Seventh-day Adventists are Christians. Let me say that again. Not all Seventh-day Adventists have the love of God in your hearts, much less a love for you and me. I can tell you that when I got on the road, the very first time before I, I, I bought my house, I, I got on the road. Five months I was looking. I met some Adventists along the way. Not one of them, not one opened their doors for us, or for me. Not one. Not one. I actually met somebody who had a huge mansion, a big mansion, like almost a four bedroom mansion with just two people. No, 4,000 square foot, or excuse me, 4,000 square feet mansion, four bedrooms with just two people. Guess what? That person didn't even let us stay that night. They turned us away. And so, I say that when you walk away, now is the time to make the necessary preparations, meaning you can put your house on the market, you can sell it by the grace of God and leave the city. Don't think that you're just going to walk away somewhere and, and you're going to find yourself among kind, loving Adventists that are going to just welcome you with open arms. Unfortunately, my brother and my sister, it's not like that. Unfortunately... There are better Christians out there than some Seventh-day Adventists. And I say that without any apology. Because unfortunately, the love of God is not in some of our hearts. And so don't count on, on somebody just welcoming you, welcoming you with open arms. Yes, there are some Christians out there or some Seventh-day Adventists out there that will definitely welcome you with open arms. How are you going to find them? <laughs> Where are you going to find them at? Step out on faith. God is with you. The God who has told you to move will provide. I am a living testimony of that. He provided for us. And by his grace, within a month, it, 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 it's unheard of. Because once you get the land, you have to clear, especially if it's a virgin land, you have to clear it and this and that and the other there's a whole lot of things in there. And then here, it's not like living in the cities. In the country, it's not like living in the cities. It takes time for people to come around. There, we're, there are a lot of uh, shortages of handyman, or, or it takes time for people to get to you to do any things for you. And by God's grace, it just boom, 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 boom. Everything was just so fast and so quick that he settled us within a month. Now, we're not fully settled, but where we're living at, it is livable. And I don't have a mortgage. And by the grace of God, this morning, actually, I stepped off the porch that I'm sitting talking to you at right now. I stepped off the porch and just thank the living God that I could take a breath, that I can have the peace, that I can have the soundness of mind. You can breathe. You can breathe and just be grateful to have a roof over your head. And so today I just simply wanted to, 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 to just, let me read something real quick in Isaiah chapter 26, Isaiah 26 verses three. This is very important for those of you that are worry, worried and worrying and doubting and fearful. This is what Isaiah 26 verses three is saying. He's saying thou wilt keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee mm. let me read that again thou wilt keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusteth in thee don't fear don't be afraid move out in faith 
Step out on faith and watch what God will do for you. Pray to him to guide you. Pray to him to lead you and step out on faith and see what God will do for you. It will, it will shock you. If you have any questions, definitely you can, you can, you can ask. I have, I have no problem whatsoever uh, 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 answering any questions that any of you might have. But please, please, I'm telling you in the name of Jesus Christ, if you value your salvation, if you value Jesus Christ and his word, if you value the life of your family, now is a time to leave the cities and the sun is coming back again. It's going to get in the, in my face and in the video, but I, I'm going to just cut it short here and just say, um, may God keep you. May God help you as you decide, as you, as you weigh this all important because your salvation and my salvation depends on it. As you weigh all this all important decision, it's a heavy one and it's a big one. But I guarantee you, if you step out on faith, you'll be amazed. You'll be, watch, just step out on faith and watch God. But every step of the way, consult him. Pray to God to give you guidance and to lead you. And the sun is really bad. So I'm going to cut it short. Until next time.